Good morning, Pak Arlan. Good morning, Bu Rana. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, talk to you today, this morning, and uh, let me introduce our guest. Uh, we are with uh, Pak Arlan Setiawan. He is known as the founding father of Division G of District 87 Toastmaster, and I'm Ronawati, your host. So we are so fortunate today that uh, we have the opportunity to talk to Pak Arlan. Thank you, Pak. My pleasure, Burana. Really uh, very happy to be with you today. Thank you. Pa Arlan, uh, pa Arlan is known as the founding father. I think many clubs within Division G in Toastmaster District 87, basically probably you are one of the, or you were the person who helped to start. So maybe if you can share with us, you know, what is, why are you so obsessed, you know, with Toastmaster getting more and more people uh, being a member in Toastmaster and having a new club? Well, okay, it's a very long story actually, but just to give you a, a brief explanation, actually, I'm not the only one who work very hard. There's a lot of other people involved in, in this project. I would say project. <laughs> With a common vision or a common goal shared by our past leaders. You know, in the past, when I joined Toastmaster in 2006, we had only one club. It's called Surabaya Toastmaster Club. At that time, there were only six members. Yeah. And the reason why we had this dream, because number one, we have to wait very long to get our turn to deliver our speech, because there's only one club. It's different from present today. Yeah? We have many clubs. If you like to deliver speech, you can go to many, many, many clubs. So we think that, oh, it's so nice if we have two clubs or three clubs at least, so we don't have to wait that, that long. The waiting is very long. Sometimes you have to wait two months just to get your turn. Not only because very little members available at the moment, but also the evaluators not available. Mm -hmm. So we get together and had a meeting. We sat down and tried to draw a plan or maybe a road map or whatever you call it, how to build more clubs. We could start by building an area first because to build an area, you need four clubs at least. And that time we were actually as inspired by other places like Medan, for instance. Medan had already deficient. You know, to have a division, you must have at least 12 clubs. So it's very hard, right? So that's our dream. How nice if we can have this area or division. Yeah. I remember those days, it's very tough. You know, every time we had a TLI training or leadership training or contests, we had to send people to Jakarta. Now at that time, you know, the train system was still not very good. They, they took night train, they left Surabaya in the evening, and then arriving in Jakarta in the morning. Then they went straight away to the training, hoping that they could save some money for the hotel. Then at the end of the training, they would go back to Surabaya straight away. <laughs> you know, the plan is nice. It was nice on paper, but the reality, the time they joined the training, they felt so exhausted, so tired. They couldn't concentrate at all. Yeah. And you know, the, the sound of the train was still in the ear. <laughs> so, they said, no, 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 this is torturing, torturing. I think we need to have our own division so we can have 
we can have you know our own training our own contests yeah. so that's the uh, the starting point yeah. so what we did we tried to develop the roadmap you know number one we need to build the infrastructure first what i mean by infrastructure is it's not like road or bridges or but it's something else it's just more in figurative meaning so we need leaders because if you build clubs there are no leaders it's, it's no point because the club will die because nobody is running it so you need a team of leaders if you buy an area at least four clubs you need at least eight leaders because each club probably needs two leaders and apart from that you also need venue because venue is one of the biggest challenges in in building a club because most club when they start a club yeah, they use restaurant or hotel they have to pay very expensive and that's one factor that is hampering the the building of the clubs so we try to find ways how how to build this you know club with using available venues so we try to approach university because university they have a lot of rooms available especially night time is barely utilized it's almost empty so that's why we tried to approach the university but it's very difficult because we had no contact we didn't have any access to universities or maybe school school is the same we don't we didn't have any access apart from school maybe courses like english courses but they're not interested so we tried to think of how to get access to universities and it so happened there is this ex ministers or former minister of education very high profile person yeah. professor wadiman joyo hadikusumo ah sorry professor wadiman joyo nagoro yeah. so we tried to approach him yeah actually i i didn't know him at all yeah so i just dare myself to to call him Pawardiman. My name is Arlen. I'm from Surabaya. And we like to build clubs. And we understand that you are the expert of building clubs. Will it be possible if I can spend some time with you just to get some, some pointers from you, perhaps, how to build clubs? And the reception was extremely well. <laughs> He's, he said, why don't you come to our club meeting? on wednesday start at seven o'clock mm -hmm. so i went to see him and from then on we we became good friends mm -hmm. and it so happened that professor wardiman is a very um, active toastmaster members he built so many clubs and he also liked to give seminars also in surabaya so he accompanied me to see the rectors of the universities, yeah, just to introduce Toastmasters program to the universities. And the response is very, very good yeah, because most universities said, oh, this is something good. I, I think it's very important for us to build the clubs too. And you know what? We could build so many clubs because of that. We build, you know, you see there are two clubs, ITS and then UPH and also the schools, Margie and IEU clubs. So within a very short time, we could manage to build at least eight clubs. Can you imagine? Yeah. But what happened to those clubs? Okay, actually, pa Wardiman, Professor Wardiman said, well, it's very difficult to build uh, a club that can last long. 
especially corporate club, because uh, like what they say, there is an expression, easy come, easy go. You know, what is easily achieved is also easily lost here. So be careful because you have to, you know, nurture the clubs. But the idea first is we focus on quantity first. And then later on, we, we try to focus on quality. But what we need is just to build a division first. So in 2009, we managed to build the Division G here after less than three years. Actually, when we started, it's 2007. Yeah. So we managed it in July 2009. Yeah. But since then, it's, it's a very difficult time for us because we need to nurture the club. Yeah. To build those clubs, easy. Yeah. But to maintain, is a, no, to build a club is difficult. But to run the club, to nurture the club is more difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, we work very hard to, you know, to maintain this, uh, the club. One by one, it, it collapsed, you know, we built another club <laughs> because we, we know that it's gonna happen. Yeah. Club will die, you need to replace with new clubs. So since then, we keep building clubs just to replace the new clubs, the, the club that has, you know, died. Mm. So what's the challenge, but actually, to keep those clubs? You know, if a club based on corporate, you know, clubs, eh, it's very difficult to get them committed with the, the program. Yeah. Because they want to join as members, it's not because what they want, but because they are instructed by, you know, the boss. Yeah. So that's why their commitment is very low. Yeah. So what we did, we tried to convince them, why don't you split? 50% is from your own people, your, your staff, your teacher, your lecturers, and the rest 50% are from community. That's what we did with Eagle Toastmasters, actually. And you see, the club is still su surviving until today. Yeah. And there's some other clubs like Empire, too, are uh, still su surviving to this day. And of course, STC has been community club for since the beginning. Yeah. Mm. So I think uh, initially you joined STC, yeah? Yeah, I joined STC. So, so STC Surabaya. is the first club in Surabaya. And then what is next? Next is IEU. It's a university. Mm. It's uh, Indonesian European University. Mm, okay, IEU. Okay, I remember IEU. that. IEU. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And uh, the club then changed to Dynamic. Mm. The name, the name was changed to Dynamic. Hmm. And so now from those clubs, basically now Survive, we have about how many clubs now in, in Division G? Uh, when we started, when we started, mm -hmm. uh, we had 15 clubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the end of the first term, we still managed to to have 15 clubs. But now we only have 10 clubs. So that means we are short five, five clubs. But also change, yeah? Because the universities one do not exist anymore. So basically now- Yeah, sometimes, you know, they change the name. Mm -hmm. And then from a close club or corporate club, they change the community clubs. Mm -hmm. So we just, you know, change the, the members, yeah. and then the names and the members and the locations. Uh, actually, what drives you to be like a diehard Toastmaster? Pa? So, what's your dream? <laughs> no, actually, I don't know. Maybe I'm so exposed to projects. I'm an engineer, and 
I became a businessman. It's also very much involved in projects. You know, sometimes we build uh, like pipeline and construction. So we need to build a team. So there's a lot of team building activities. You need to get the right people to do the jobs. Yeah. So I need to do a lot of motivation work you know, to give you know, those people, okay, you are in the good hands yeah, because this is the, the jobs that you are suited, the job that you can be very good at and you have a you know, good future for yourself. So a lot of motivations yeah. and because of that, I, I managed to do a lot of things. Yeah. In, in my business or professional setting, as well as my personal settings. Mm -hmm. You know, I was very much involved also in sport activities. Uh, there is a sport that called squash. I don't know whether you're familiar with squash. Squash yeah. is, a, is, is like tennis that play with the wall in, in a very enclosed place with the glass on site, both sides, and also the back glass door. So um, that time there was no players in Indonesia. So I was still staying in Singapore. I brought some trainers from Singapore to Indonesia to train the local people. Uh, I, recruited, I recruited them from, you know, like ball boys from the you know, tennis court, also those uh, people, you know, like the street vendors. So I gather everybody, all the young people under the age of 17, just to get, you know, to play squash. And then I started building one club, and then two clubs, and three clubs. Mm -hmm. Then I started introducing this, you know, in each cities. And it's the same thing what we did in Toastmaster. We, we did a demo meeting, but this one is not demo meeting, but a demo game. Mm -hmm. We invited people to come and have a look. But mostly we work with the fitness centers because mostly fitness centers, they had you know, like scores courts mm -hmm. or hotels. So we, we demonstrated to them, this is how you play the squash game. It's very, very good game. It's actually a combination between power and speed. Pretty much like badminton and tennis in between. Mm. Ah. Then um, I, I try to you know, develop not only the games, but also the infrastructure, like I mentioned earlier on in those masters. So I built the associations and we built the first association that names Indonesian Squash Association because you must have at least 13 provinces and there's a lot of roadshow <laughs> to demonstrate this. And finally, we managed to, to build our association and then included our association in the sport councils. And now the association has, has been in existence for many, many years and it's running itself because the system is already there. Hmm. But, so, uh, by building this Toastmaster, actually, what benefit do you get? Wow, a lot of benefits. <laughs> well, just to give you one benefit is your personal development. Because if you build a club or, or this division, for instance, you you meet a lot of friends yeah? and you have a lot of opportunity to develop yourself, yeah? to hone up your communication and leadership skills yeah? because the facilities are there, available for you. It's up to you whether you want to use it or not. Yeah? But for me, I think it's the best opportunity. And I still feel that at this age, I'm 70 right now, I still need to keep learning, to keep practicing, to keep polishing up my, my skills because it's the same thing like, you know, um, going to the gym. You know, you work out to build up your stamina, to, to build up your muscles. Yeah. 
And once you have your muscles, your stamina, you think it's done? You stop doing it? No, it's gone. After that, you go back to the square one again. So I believe the you know this public speaking skills, communication skills, the leadership skills, you need to constantly practicing it on you know routine. Yeah, I think there is the benefit of being a Toastmaster member. But what benefits do you get by building so many clubs? Yeah, like I said, it's it's you know enlarge your horizons and not your network sometimes when i walk in the mall because i gave a lot of you know presentation a lot of you know demo meetings so i met with a lot of people and there is this guy came up to me in the, the mall say Paolan, how are you do you still remember me actually i don't remember <laughs> so uh, I said, yes, of course, I remember you. <laughs> and we had a chat, and after a while we split, and I was trying to recall who the hell is this guy. <laughs> so there's a lot of friends you can never imagine. And if you want to build something, you have the confidence already. Now, recently I, I built and that's not an interesting it's a business community called Biscom. and that was 2014 when i just returned from uk yeah so i i phoned founded this uh Biscom together with some friends it's not only me yeah? the same thing with those masters it's not only me because you need a team to build you cannot do it alone yeah uh, so, if you can also share your Toastmaster journey and oh. <laughs> is your turning point actually. You know, like I mentioned earlier, I joined Toastmaster in 2006. To be honest, I didn't know much about Toastmasters. At that time, Google was still in the early stage, so not much information you can get from Toastmasters. And I received the invitation to join Toastmasters in the morning. Yeah. So this lady called me, Farland, there is this uh, Toastmasters meeting. So would you like to attend this meeting? Because the, there will be two good speakers, one from America and the other one is from Singapore. So I tried to figure out what Toastmaster is. Yeah. But I couldn't get, you know, what the meaning is. I couldn't get it from Google either. So I tried to just figure out myself, oh, maybe this is, a, you know, like Kung Fu master is a specialist in Kung Fu. So those master might be a specialist in, in making toast. <laughs> maybe they're selling toaster or something. Ah, no point. But then I, maybe it's, it's good to see, just to have a look. And then I will sneak out because I thought it was a big meeting with music, with food. And... But when I opened up the door, <laughs> there were only six of them. <laughs> and I got trapped inside. How could I escape? <laughs> this was, you know, the uh, discovery of Toastmasters purely by accident. <laughs> But then I went, you know, you know, to take part in the table topic, and and it was stupid of me actually. <laughs> I I said, well, I because I deliver the speech, which I didn't understand myself. <laughs> I was so nervous, you know. I was stuttering, you know. I was mumbling, and then my my words are overlapping. And so messy, unstructured, <laughs> and, and the strange thing, these people, they said, you are very good. <laughs> you are very good. You could be a good speaker if you join our program, if you're serious, with a little bit of investment. And they started talking about money, you know, this is only $4. That time, $4 or four fifty, as the... Julie, the monthly Jews, yeah. 
And I said, wow, it's, it's, it's not very expensive. You know? it's, it's no harm joining it. You know? And they said, it's a very good, good program. If you want to study public speaking, this is the place. Yeah. Actually, I find it also very weird. You know, people clapping for no reasons, you know, and people shaking hands, and the same person for so many times, and sometimes two times, three times. But I think he did the shake hands before. <laughs> Why did he do it again? <laughs> so in my mind, this is weird. This is like a cult, you know, cult. You know, the, the underground movement, you know, mostly in the dungeon or in the basement, you know, dark and very dark room. Because that time the room was also very, very small. It's only maybe four by six, very small and very tight. Only six people. And these people were clapping all the time, clapping, clapping. <laughs> it's very weird. But anyway, I, I finally joined on that very first day. Mm -hmm. That very first day, actually, I felt like getting married on my first date. <laughs> what transformation but, do you feel, but before what? and after you joined Toastmaster? Sorry, what did what you say? Transformation. Oh, transformations. Yeah, you know, before, you know, in my business, uh, I'm selling equipments something that costs very expensive and very difficult to sell. You know, it takes meetings after meetings, presentation after presentations. Yeah. And I rely on my sales engineers to do it because they're very good. Yeah. But sometimes they miss points also, which makes me very unhappy, very not satisfied. So I try to find out maybe I should do it also myself in case, you know, you cannot rely too much on your sales engineer because what happens if he resigns suddenly then it's you know dangerous for you because nobody's selling for you right and my present presentation skill is horrible <laughs> and it's so boring and people people find it you know they they turn away from me yeah? that's why i think uh, I need to, to learn public speaking, to so get people attentions. Mm. And that I got from Toastmaster. Toastmaster already transformed me. So and by being the, in Toastmaster, you are, be, you are able to do a better presentation then, and also you are able to sell more. Come yes, in. you're right, you're right. Because when I try to sell, I don't, you know, go straight away giving, you know, the, you know, the facts, the, the data and everything is very boring stuff. I just started with a story, you know, like small talks. No, I think they, they have this, uh, you know, like elevator speech. Yeah, uh, just three minutes while the elevator is going up. <laughs> So this is what I, I learned and it caught a lot of attention of the potential customers. And sometimes I also delivered you know, a demonstration. That time there was no video, there was no, you know, like this laptop. Yeah. So you had to demonstrate. For instance, when I was trying to sell, you know, this very difficult system that, that this system, you know, will be tested to the burst point of the, the tubing, for instance. Yeah. So it's very difficult. You show the picture, they, they throw away. <laughs> mm. You explain to them, they never listen. Yeah. So that's why I managed to build this small hydraulic pond just to show to them that it will work up to the burst point of this equipment. Mm, okay. So I show it to them because I believe seeing is believing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically what uh, transform you or what make you, it, this is like addiction, right? Being um, joining in Toastmaster in the environment that is very supportive uh, where you can learn about how to communicate and 
become a better leader. So this feeling of sharing, caring, helping, help you like getting addicted to Toastmaster that you stay with You're Toastmaster right. for You're right. <laughs> One thing I like about Toastmasters, the way they give you the uh, evaluations or feedbacks, it's very constructive. You know, I remember, yeah, the first time when I delivered my table topic speech. So I, I told them the story about my, my trip to Papua New Guinea. Yeah. You know what they said? You are a natural storyteller. What? Natural storyteller. <laughs> but I didn't believe it actually, but then I kept using it, you know, the story in my speech. Story. You know, that's what they do to the small child. If the small child is doing good thing, yeah, people always say, oh, you're doing good things, and the small child will keep doing it over and over. We are all like small kids. <laughs> So we keep doing it and doing until to this day I'm still using stories because stories is so powerful really a good attention grabber especially if you put humor here and there that will be very interesting people will listen okay okay thanks a lot for sharing Pak Arlan Setiawan so we get an insight why like Pak Arlan stay for a long time in Toastmaster and I think it will inspire us all uh, to basically getting addicted to being Toastmaster member, sharing, caring, develop our communication and also leadership skills. Thank you Pak pa Arlan for the opportunity to have a discussion with you and if you have anything else that we have not covered and you would like to share with us before we close. Thank you. Yeah, one thing that I like to mention here that um, learning is something that you should never stop. So I believe in lifelong learning yeah, because you know life is like riding a bicycle. You have to keep your balance. You have to keep moving. So that's why you never stop learning you keep on doing it because everything is changing in business you are also in business Bruno. Mm. so if we don't keep abreast with the latest development with the latest concept with the latest uh, technology we'll be left behind because life is like a race if you don't keep learning you will lose the, the race so that's what I like to uh, suggest to everybody. I remember in, actually my plan was when I was 60, mm -hmm. I like to get my master's degree, but I could only do it when I was 62. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because when I was 60, I just been in, in Toastmasters for four years. It's not enough because I, I need more time to, to learn. So in 2012, that means six years I've been in Toastmasters. Or maybe this is the time when I need to have a break and then go back to my original plan to, to get master's degree. And it's been my dream since I was a child. I like to study in UK or in US. So I left Surabaya in 2012 to go to UK to get my master's degree. But it was a bit prematurely actually because the Toastmaster club was still not ready, especially my home club because Empire was suffering you know, big loss of membership and then because uh, I was away, yeah. So I a little bit regretted actually, but I had to go back to my original, my personal plan. Yeah. You know, in life you 
you have three things if you want to do big things. Number one, you must have money, right? Number two, you must have time. Number three, you must have energy. Now, when I was 25, when I finished my university, I wanted to study further, actually, but I didn't have money. Yeah. I didn't have also time because I need to work. Yeah. But I still have energy. Yeah. But when I was 40, I worked already. I had the, the money. I had still the energy. But I don't have... I didn't have the time. And then when I was 60, I had the money, I had the time, but the energy. If I wait any longer, I might have not, I might have no energy left. So that's why if I stay any longer, then that means my dream is gone. Yeah. That's why at the age of 62, I hope it was not too late that time. I decided to go to UK to study. I might have a little bit left, energy left. Yeah. But thank God I managed to finish the master's degree. Yeah. Okay, and thank you for sharing. <laughs> thank you for sharing, Parla. Thank you. My and, pleasure. Yeah. Bruno, my pleasure. It's really happy to, to share. Have a nice day. Thank you. You too.